Let's take a look at what comes in the Skyobot 2.0 kit. In the first bag you'll find a breadboard, two DC motors, a motor controller chip, 9 volt battery connector, and breadboard jumper wires. In the next bag you will find two wheels, two motor mounts, a T connector, a 9 volt battery mount, and two rubber bands. Over here we have an Atmega 328 microcontroller. You can go ahead and remove this from its packaging as we'll be using it to program the Skyobot 2.0 soon. You will also find a complementing USB cable for the microcontroller. There are two wooden craft sticks for the main chassis of the Skyobot 2.0. And let's not forget about our 9 volt battery power source. Let's jump right into building the main chassis of the Skyobot 2.0. Start by sliding the T-connector about midway onto one of the wooden sticks. The T-connector will also act as a mount for our breadboard and electronics. Next, we can slide the 9 volt battery mount about midway onto the second wooden stick. To finalize our chassis assembly, insert one end of the second wooden stick into the remaining slot on the T-connector. For this step, we'll need the two wheels, two rubber bands, as well as the two motors and their motor mounts. Press each motor into a motor mount. They should slide in and fit snugly. Try your best to avoid pressing on the wire connections on the back of the motor to avoid damaging these connections. Now we need to locate the flat part on the motor shaft. We want to make sure to align this flat part with the flat part on the wheel when we insert the motor shaft to the wheel. Remember to be mindful of the wire connections. Now we can do the same thing for the second wheel. Let's give our Skyobot some traction by wrapping these rubber bands around the rim of the wheel. Now that we've completed the wheel assemblies, we're ready to put it all together. Simply press one end of the wooden stick into each of the motor mounts. Make sure to press it in nice and snugly so that the motor mounts don't fall off. The orientation of the motor mounts does not matter. The motor can either be on the top or the bottom of the wooden stick. Before we begin wiring things together, let's look at what the final schematic will look like. We can use this as a roadmap to complete the wiring for the Skyobot. Let's jump in and start working towards this one step at a time. Let's start by inserting the microcontroller across the brake in the breadboard. The pins of the microcontroller will be parallel to this brake and the USB should be pointing off of the breadboard. This orientation of the USB port is important to allow easier access when programming the microcontroller later. Next, let's insert the motor controller in a similar way to the microcontroller. You will see a half circle notch on one end. Make sure this notch is facing the microcontroller. Now that these components are in place, we can start connecting these pins together with the breadboard jumper wires. Let's start by connecting the voltage in pin on the microcontroller to the positive power rail on the right side of the breadboard. Next, we'll connect the ground pin on the microcontroller to the negative power rail on the breadboard. Before we go any further, let's make sure we understand the pin layout of the motor controller. Starting with pin 1 in the bottom right, we have the Motor 1 Enable or PWM Speed Control Pin. By providing 5 volts of power to this pin, we can enable Motor 1. 
If we provide 0 volts, it will disable motor 1. Pin 2 is the first motor 1 logic pin. What this means is if we send a signal from our microcontroller to pin number 2, it will activate power on pin number 3, which will give power to the motor terminal that's connected to pin 3 on the motor controller. Pins 4, 5, as well as 12 and 13 are ground pins. We will connect these to the negative power rail on the breadboard. Pins 6 and 7 have the same functionality as pins 3 and 2 respectively, however they interact with the second terminal on motor 1. Pin 8 is our motor power supply. This is where pins 3, 6, 11, and 14 will get their power from. Pins 9 through 15 on the left side of the motor controller have the same functionality as pins 1 through 7. The only difference is that they will interact with our second motor. And finally, pin 16 is the power supply for the motor controller. Now let's put all this new knowledge to work. Let's begin by connecting pin 16 on the motor controller to the 5 volt power supply coming from the microcontroller. We also need a power source for our motors. This will be provided through pin 8 on the motor controller. Run a jumper from pin 8 to the positive power rail. Next, we need to make sure the motor controller is grounded. Pins 4, 5, 12, and 13 should all be grounded on the motor controller. Let's connect 4 and 5 together, and the same for 12 and 13. We can then run a jumper from either 4 or 5 to the negative power rail, and a jumper from either 12 or 13 to the negative power rail. I will connect pin 5 and pin 12 to the negative power rail. Now our motor controller is properly wired for power. We just need to connect the logic pins from the microcontroller and the leads from the motors. Run a jumper from pin D2 on the microcontroller to pin 2 on the motor controller. Next, run a jumper from pin D4 on the microcontroller to pin 7 on the motor controller. Connect a jumper from pin D7 to pin 10 on the motor controller. Connect a jumper from pin D8 to pin 15 on the motor controller. Now connect a jumper from pin D5 to pin 1 on the motor controller. And finally, connect a jumper from pin D6 to pin 9 on the motor controller. Before we finish wiring the rest of the electronics, let's write a little bit of code. Let's begin by downloading and installing the Arduino IDE. Go ahead and open a web browser and find your way to the Arduino IDE software download page. Once here, download the appropriate version for your operating system and complete the installation. Once installed, let's go ahead and open up the Arduino IDE. Here you will see a blank sketch. A sketch is just a term for the code you will load onto your microcontroller to run your Skyobot. Each one of these sections between these two curly brackets is called a function. In the body of the setup function, we will write code that will only run once. We will use this to define pin output types. The loop function is what the microcontroller will run in a continuous loop. This is where we can write the code to control our Skyobot. It can be one instruction that repeats indefinitely forever, or it can be a series of sequential instructions that loop indefinitely. Let's start by defining some constant variables at the very top. These will be defined outside of both the setup and loop functions. These constant variables will define names for each output pin number on the microcontroller. Let's start by typing const int motor write a equals 2. We end each statement with a semicolon, as this is how the computer recognizes the end of an instruction. Our next instruction will be const int 
motor right B equals 4, semicolon. Now let's do the same for motor left A and motor left B being pins 7 and 8. Now let's define enable right as pin number 5 and enable left as pin 6. We are now ready to jump down and write some setup code inside of our setup function. Let's type pin mode and inside parentheses we'll put motor right A comma output close parentheses semicolon. This will tell our microcontroller that motor right A which is defined as pin 2 will be an output pin. In fact all of our pins will be output pins. So go ahead and repeat this line for the other five variables we defined above. Feel free to copy and paste and change the variable name on each line. Now that we have finished our setup code, we're ready to write some instructions in the loop section. We will start by typing digital right and inside parentheses enable left comma high close parentheses semicolon. This instruction tells our microcontroller to send a high signal or in this case 5 volts from pin 6 to the left enable pin on our motor controller. This will enable our left motor to function. Now let's do the same thing for the enable right pin. Even with both enable pins activated, the motor still won't function because we haven't told them what to do yet. By sending a high signal to motor right A and a low signal to motor right B, we'll tell the motor to spin in one direction. Alternatively, we could swap the high and low to tell the motor to spin in the opposite direction. If we send the same signal to both motor leads, for example high or low, the motor will just not run. Let's do the same by sending a high signal to motor left A and a low signal to motor left B. Believe it or not, that's all the code we need to make the Skyobot work. Before we upload this code to the microcontroller to watch the Skyobot run, let's quickly review what we just did. First we defined some variables for our microcontroller pins. Then we set each of those pins as an output pin. We then defined our high and low pins using the digital write function. Now let's save and verify our code by clicking the checkmark icon in the top left corner. The verify process quickly scans our code and checks for any syntactical errors. For example, if we forgot a semicolon at the end of one line and we verify our code, it will tell us that there is an expected semicolon before the ending bracket. Make sure to replace the semicolon if you followed along and removed it. Now that we've finished writing the code to control the Skyobot, go ahead and plug the microcontroller into your computer so that we can upload the code to operate the Skyobot. Go to the Tools menu, go down to the Board section, and make sure you have the Arduino Nano option selected. Back in the Tools menu, go to the Port section and select the option that says USB Serial in it. Now that our microcontroller is connected to the computer via USB, all we need to do is click the Upload button which can be found in the top left corner next to the Verify button. When you click the Upload button, you will see the LEDs on the microcontroller blink and a message in the bottom of the IDE saying Done Uploading when it completes. We can now remove the USB cable from the computer and the microcontroller. Place the breadboard into its bracket with the USB port facing backwards. Remember we defined pins 9 through 15 on the motor controller to control the left motor, so we want these to be on the left side. Connect one lead from the left motor to pin 11 and the other lead to pin 14. The orientation of the leads does matter, but we can easily address this if it's wrong, so don't worry about it for now. Go ahead and orient your Skyobot in a position that's comfortable for you to work on the right side. Connect one lead from the right motor to pin 3 on the motor controller and the other lead to pin 6. Again, if you guess the orientation of the leads wrong here, we will address it shortly. Plug the positive lead from the 9 volt battery connector into the positive power rail on the breadboard. 
Connect the 9V battery to the 9V battery connector and place it into its bracket on the Skyobot. When we plug the negative lead from the 9V battery into the negative power rail on the breadboard, we expect the Skyobot to turn on and move forward. In my case, the right wheel is moving backwards. This means the orientation of the motor leads on the right wheel need to be flipped. I will reverse the position of the motor leads connected to pins 3 and 6 on the motor controller so that the right wheel will rotate forward. You may need to do this for both wheels if your Skyobot was running backwards. Connect the negative lead from the 9V battery back to the negative power rail on the breadboard and you should see your Skyobot move forward. Congratulations on successfully building, wiring, and programming the Skyobot 2.0.